start, Colleen? Or... Hi, everybody. Welcome to Consistently Creative Crew, our project recipe class. My name is Colleen Day. I'm here with my other crew members, Kari and Cheryl. And tonight we're teaching the Golden Harvest Project Recipe. But first, Cheryl is going to show us real quickly the um, new Christmas product that she got in today, and she played with it. There we go. So this is called Seasonal Sightings. And here are the mat pack uh, mats. And this is the, the borders. Um, and I just tried to get them all on one sheet. And you can see how big they are and beautiful. They um, take up this whole sheet. And I'm sorry, because my thing looks a little blurry, but there you get the idea. It's really beautiful with the cardinals. And then if you saw my post about um, the designer sheets, the decorative idea sheets, you can see that I have um, attempted to cluster these and make little design elements. So um, I do just put them on a sheet so I can see what I have and what I'm working from. And also I display them at my crops and stuff. So um, this was really, really hard to get them all on one page. That's how many are in that beautiful embellishment pack and that embellishment pack also comes with the gemstones as well and these are the stickers which I have not done anything with but they are adorable and if you do the buy it all bundle you get all of these things and the poinsettia edge and did we get the cardinal punch too I think it all yes. came together the yes. cardinal punch and it comes with uh, designer paper, the seasonal sightings, designer paper, the tone on tone. And if you do the buy it all bundle, you get this designer pack of 12 sheets of shades of seasonal sightings uh, for free. So I just wanted to share the one page that I played around with today and made. And you can see the little cardinals on there, I hope. I colored yeah. in the little beaks with the orange marker and the black. And anyway, this is a cute little page. I will share details on how to make this on our croppers page tomorrow. And that is that. Great. Thanks, Cheryl. It looks great. Mine, mine came in and I immediately sold it. So I had to, oh. I had to order it again. Nice. <laughs> I, haven't gotten, I haven't gotten to play with it yet. Okay, so we're going to do the um, Golden Harvest Project Recipe. And... Uh, there aren't a lot of um, tools necessary for this. There is the, um, there's a technique they show you using the pyramid keyhole border maker cartridge. And what they want you to do is fold over every other punch. So you see, you start at the top and you fold over every other point of the punch. If you don't happen to have this one, and you still want and you want to try that technique, you can use the geometric frame. Border punch would also work. And the mandala border punch will also work. This happens to only have been done on cardstock, so there's not good contrast. And if you don't have anything that will stays attached and fold back, don't worry about it. Just keep it as a technique to use um, when you do have something that you can use. You need to have um, something for your base. I'm happen to be using cardstock for my base or albums. And then you need three papers. I reached back into the Wayback Vault, and this is genuine um, paper pack. It's unfortunately no longer available. But for paper number one and paper number two, you want to have good contrast. Those are the papers. See the front and the back here contrast. You can see it. Those are the papers you're going to punch from and show both sides of the paper with the punch. And then the third paper is just a coordinating paper. So you do end up seeing 
both sides of all three of the papers. And then for tools, as I already mentioned, the border maker cartridge or a punch of your choice and your 12 inch trimmer. And I'm gonna double check my list, but I do not believe you need anything else. Oh, optional is you can have um, foam squares and a, a pen, a journaling pen, a tape runner. Are you actually scrapbooking if you don't use your tape runner? I don't think you are. Um, regular and repositionable. The repositionable is good to stick down your um, punch, to stick down every other one. And again, it's you're still getting a great layout if you don't have something that can do this. So are there any questions before we get started? I don't hear any. So let's get started. Oh, the other thing, I know we've talked about this a couple different times, but I did it again. If you have these little tiny post-it note flags, I've written the let the alphabet letters of each piece of paper that I'm going to cut. I don't know about you, but I get frustrated when I go through and I cut all the pieces and then I got to go find those certain pieces. So, you know, the organizer in me, this just makes me very happy. I'm going to make a cut and stick the little A on it and then keep moving, go on down the road. I don't, I think both Kari and Cheryl have talked about doing that. All right, with our 12 inch, nope. First thing you do is punch paper number one. So whatever punch you're gonna do, put your paper in. If your paper is directional, the punch is going up and down. I don't think my paper is directional, so I'm just going to slip it in. And you punch one border with this paper. And then we're going to cut it at two inches. So Colleen, if we're using the mandala one, like you suggested, yes. how far in do I go? You same thing. You just you just use the mandala and punch it all the way down, and then you're gonna cut it to two inches. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, I think with the two inch piece of paper. Oh, Kari, I forgot your hint. With the two inches of paper, you have plenty of space for any for majority of all of the. Um, punches that we have. So now we're going to cut it at two inches, just the tallest point. Line it up on the two of whatever you punched. Oh, I just replaced my 12 inch blade. I've never replaced it before. Holy mackerel. What a difference. I had no idea. So if you're struggling a little bit with your um, your custom your blade, order a new a new straight blade. So mine, I've had mine since the original one. I forget, Dana, how long we figured it out, like two, two or more, three years. So that's going to be piece A. You set that aside. And then the same paper, we're going to cut, I'm gonna do it this way, cut it at one inch. So you've punched it out, cut it at two, and now we're gonna just cut a strip at one inch. And this is piece B. Put my little label on it makes me very happy and the next cut is three quarters inch and then we're going to turn and cut it at six 
So three quarters inch. Turn and cut at six. And those are pieces C and D. Sorry, I'm off the page. Then our next cut is at four inches. And then we're going to turn and cut it at five and a half. Twice. And you'll have a teeny tiny little scrap at the bottom. And five and a half is right at the crease on your 12 inch trimmer. And then this little piece left over is scrap. Good for card making, embellishments. And those are pieces E and F. And then the last cut, this should be, actually it's about four inches. You take out the teeniest, tiniest little piece. Teeny, tiny little piece. Yeah, actually I've got nothing to cut off. Cut it at four inches and then you cut it at five and a half. Again, two times. Cut it four inches, turn and cut it five and a half twice. And again, you end up with a tiny scrap. And this piece is scrap. And that is it for paper number one. How's everybody doing? All right, paper number two. First thing we're going to do is punch. Punch and then cut at two inches. I know everybody knows this, but you kind of have to jump. It's not meant to slide straight down. You have to pop it out and slide it back in straight. Okay, and we're done with the punch. Let me pick up my punch poop. Is that and Cheryl's term? No, actually, I think it's mine. I don't think Cheryl will wants to claim it. <laughs> I wish it was something else, but I haven't heard anything else that makes sense. What other, what else, any other suggestions anybody has? Somebody say, somebody did say they, they came up with a better one, but now I don't remember what it was. Well, plus it's the P and the P, which right. is nice. Okay, just the highest points are up on the two inch line. And then that is piece number I. And then we're going to cut it one inches twice. There's no need for me to be spinning my paper around. I'm just doing it for fun. Okay, cut it one inch twice. I know I talked about changing my blade for the first time, but don't forget you can also flip your mat around. This little gray cutting mat, there have 
they have numbers on it and you can i'm on number four right now i've used it i've replaced that multiple times apparently i have a i have a heavy hand when i'm cutting so these are pieces one inch pieces are pieces j and k And now we're cutting at four and a half turn and cut it four and a half twice. Cut it four and a half turn and cut it four and a half twice. And the remainder is scrap. And those, this little piece here is scrap. And those are pieces L and M. And the last cut is two inches. And then this strip is, that's left over is scrap and then we're going to turn and cut at six. And those are pieces N and O. And we are finished with paper number two. We're in the home stretch. And paper number three doesn't have that many cuts. And the first thing for paper number three, is everyone doing okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. First thing at paper number three is cut it one inch twice. And those are pieces P and Q. And now we're going to cut at four and a half. And we're just going to leave it at four and a half inches, this big strip. And that's piece R. Again, that was four and a half. And the last cut is at five and a half by six. I have a little scooch to take off. That's five and a half, and I'm going to rotate it and cut it at six. And for S and T, they want you to they want to show the reverse side of the paper. I'm going to play around with it when we're putting it together. And that is it for cutting. I don't know, it was like 15 minutes. I think that's a record for me. <laughs> I think I'm, you know, the slow cropper. That's gonna be my handle, Colleen, the slow cropper. Give everybody a minute to, to catch up. And the first thing we're gonna do is take out our punch pieces and repositionable. Pieces A and I. And what you want to do is you want to face them towards each other uh -huh. where they are on my table and one side or the other you're going to start on first and um, leave the first one out and then put tape runner on every other one because we're going to fold back every other one. Put repositionable tape runner on every other one because we're going to fold back. And for those of you that like to work ahead, you're going to fold back the opposite 
one on the other side. So if we leave the first one flat, showing the way it was punched, and we fold back the second one, on the other side, we're gonna fold back the first one. So they're going to nest together. And let me just do the first couple so you see the idea. So you're not, they're not, they're not mirrors of each other. They're opposites. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way. And I can't fold straight. So you see how the left hand side, it doesn't matter which way you do it, but you're going to fold opposites of each back. They do not mirror each other. They're opposites. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Cheryl, who understands everything and as quick as can be. And does it make sense to everybody else? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, not helpful. <laughs> no, it is. But I mean, you know, yes, of course you understand it, but I just want to make sure. Did the back of the room hear me? Did everybody? <laughs> and again, it doesn't matter which side you choose to make the top one or the bottom one to fold back first or leave it open. Just make sure you do the opposite on the other side. What other punches did people find works or border maker cartridges? What's everybody using? Mandela. Okay. That works. I've um, got the geometric. Okay, nice. That works too. <clears throat> huh. I don't like what this looks like. I'm going to flip mine over. I was putting, folding the green back onto the plaid. It's very hard to see. So I'm going to unfold them, turn it over and start folding on this side because it'll show up better. Yeah, that looks better. If only I had practiced this before I did it. <laughs> I did. I did practice this before I did it. But I still didn't think that through. It's a crop opportunity. Or scrap opportunity. And then after this, all it is is. Um, putting the pieces together. This is going to be my quickest class yet. And I probably have the longest class, so. There we go. Okay. So we're going to start with our bases, mm -hmm. your album pages. Or card stock or designer paper, whatever you selected. And I'm going to put the one inch strips on either side. Get this in the paper. This is J and K. Put those down on either side. I'm being brave and using regular tape runner. As soon as I as soon as I start using regular tape runner, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh no, I put it down the wrong place. I gotta take it back up again. Okay. Um,
I'm reading the instructions. It doesn't make sense to me. Oh, okay. Here we go. So, um, piece P, which is from designer paper number three, goes on top of Okay, yeah. Goes on top of your punch border. One inch. Well, that's what I couldn't figure out. Line it up on the left hand side. I think this is a really cool technique. And I hope we have other ways we can use it. It, it comes on top of it? Yes. It's a one inch strip and it goes on top of, to the left of your punched paper. So the keyholes- it covers it. Yeah, one inch covers it. On the yeah. left. Punched paper. Okay, but that's only if you have a small okay. punch. Sure. Because oh. if you have- your geometric punch, it's larger. Oh, that's true. Okay, so then just cut well, maybe you don't need it. one strip in half if you want to. Cut one of those strips in half. So here's the, you did the Mandela, right? Well, I have one that's about like the Mandela. Yeah, I have the okay. geometric. She okay. did geometric. Did, all right, I have geometric too. Oh, I just didn't cut it to two inches thick. Right, yeah. So you can still just, if you want to, cut a strip, cut this in half, cut it in a quarter, just to add more depth to your paper. Okay. Your layout. Okay. But, you know, play with it, see what it looks like. Okay. Lost my other strip. Here we go. Because at first, you know, when you're looking at this layout, you're like, what did they do over there? All those pieces? Yeah. Right. And then you have your background showing through. So now that I've layered it, I'm putting it down. And you just want to space them out so the keyhole is just showing through. I forgot, I didn't put tape runner on my keyholes that are sticking out. Line them up to next to each other. So we're recording our progress here at the side. Whoop, whoop. Okay, there we go. All right, now let's go back to the left hand side. We have the one inch strip J already down, and now R is next. I have a lot of pattern going on in my layout. I might switch it over. Whoops, don't turn my light off. Okay. This is the four and a half by 12 inch strip. And then we have two photo mats, E and F, that go on top. And the 
then S and T. Go across. The center of the page, S and T. Then layering pieces down at the bottom. And an O across the bottom. And I'm going to place the mats on top of them so I can get them in a good spot. Why are my papers? These look, this looks too big up here. Colleen. Yes. The one, the strips on the right, since uh -huh. I had to cut mine down for the Mandela. So like that, whatever blue flowered, is that what's up against the plaid? Yes. Um, so this is a this is a two inch strip that was this is punched and cut to two inches. Right. And then I'm there's talking, one inch. I'm talking about the, the other part. Okay. This is a one inch plat right. and a one inch plat is the same on the other side too. Yes. Okay. Do you have enough room with your punches? Um uh, well I'm just I had to cut because of the Mandela right. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cut just like a, a half a, a half an inch and I'm butting that up against the other the one inch one. You okay. What I'm saying? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. There we go. These are lengthwise. These are here. These are here. And then across the bottom are C and D. So you can do journaling. I'm about, anybody have any questions? Because I'm about ready to pause the recording to finish putting it together. Pauline, where is piece B? I think piece B goes over by your Border piece. on the right hand side. Piece B goes right there. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. yep. And then G and H go across the top. Okay. I will pause the recording and then we'll see the finished product. Great. Okay. Welcome back. And through the magic of video recording, my layout is complete. Oh, and embellish and embellished. Um, I have spots down here that I can put journaling on, but I haven't added that yet. Um, photos, you can see the great technique that they are showing you with this project recipe is folding back and you actually fold them opposite of each other so that it looks multi-layered. And I hope you enjoyed following along with us this evening. And please, um, whether you're doing watching this live or doing a recording, please post a photo of your layout so everyone you can inspire everyone else by how you interpreted the layout. Thanks so much, everybody. Oh, wait, we've got a few people who want to show theirs. Sure. So hold on. Okay. Great. Share oh, okay. Hold it Shall higher, Carol. I usually oh. have my camera, but I don't have it. Nice. Nice. That nice. looks great. Looks good. Okay, anybody else? I'll show mine for the recording. And I'll try not to do it sideways. So last year's Croptoberfest. Pretty. That's very nice. All right. Thanks Thank for sharing. You everyone for joining us. And don't forget to check out our Facebook page at Consistently Creative Crew and our Facebook group at Consistently Creative Croppers. And we'll be posting instructions out there. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Kari. Thanks, Colleen. Oh, sure. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank <laughs> you, everybody. Thanks.
Good night, John boy. 